Hey guys, I'm packing my bags. I'm heading out to E3 uh, right now. Uh, first, I'll be going to the EA Plays event, and then afterwards, uh, actual E3 itself, and you know all the individual shows. Of course, I'm going to be on YouTube uh, live at E3 with Jeff Cayley on his show. Uh, I'll provide you the links. Follow me on on Twitter uh, so you can get the links, and then I'll see if I can't. I don't know. Um, you know, mirror the stream or something like that, uh, or just put up, uh, you know, something uh, while it's live. Uh, so, yeah, um, I wanted to put up some content while I'm gone. Uh, Delrith actually had this uh, Deathwing review done pretty much a, a day or two after it came out. So this was pretty late, but we do want to give our opinion on it. I, uh, I think, um, you know, Focus, uh, as a publisher, makes some good games, and it's on Warhammer, and I've gotten a chance to play a little bit of it. So we wanted to put our opinion out there. And then uh, we'll, we'll have some more content. I'll be doing some vlogs, some interviews, some previews, and, and stuff uh, while I'm over there for a week. And then I'll be back, and uh, yeah, we'll see what's up and what's next uh, after we get back, okay, guys? So uh, check out the review. Hey guys, how's it going? Delrith here, bringing you another rapid fire style review, this time for the first person shooter Space Hulk Deathwing Enhanced Edition. This is sort of a re-release and major content update for the game Space Hulk Deathwing, which released in around December of 2016. At the time of launch, the game had massive issues such as getting 10 to 20 FPS in some missions no matter how good your PC was. And had it been reviewed, it would have scored a 4 or 5 on the scale without a question. Also, if you're wondering, if you own the original game, then you get this updated version for free on Steam, I just want to throw that in there. This re-release aimed to fix almost all of the issues people had with the game, and since that pretty much made it a brand new game, I decided to check it out and see if it had actually become worth playing. Full disclosure, I am a massive Warhammer. 40k fan and I've always been in love with the universe, so I'm always playing Warhammer 40k games of every type and variety whenever they come out. To summarize the premise of this game as best as possible, you play as a team member on a squad of extremely elite special forces belonging to a highly militarized group of super soldiers belonging to the Imperium of Man. You are tasked with going into these massive derelict space hulks, recovering artifacts of extremely ancient origin and massive value, generally weapons and armor, and purging a massive amount of alien enemies known as the Tyranid that have infested the ships. Just to briefly summarize the Tyranid, they're a swarm of ravenous, murderous, and excessively angry well bugs, kind of bugs, that want to devour and deconstruct all life in the entire universe down into biomass to make more bugs. But hey, that's the Tyranid. Scary, right? Oh yeah, and to make matters worse, fighting on these space hulks generally involves you being packed into extremely narrow corridors fighting these monsters. The story has you playing as the Dark Angels, a chapter of the super soldiers in the Imperium, trying to recover relics of immense power to learn more about their shrouded past history. The Deathwing part of the game relates to the branch of the Dark Angels that is being utilized to invade these space hulks. Throughout the story, you are tasked with completing specific objectives on massive, sprawling, non-randomized levels and simply trying to survive against the endless onslaught of energies. It's okay to draw a parallel to Left 4 Dead in this situation. I will say, though, that the campaign itself feels kind of bare-bones still and extremely short. I wish they would have added more levels, more cutscenes, and mixed it up with a few unique fights or scenarios, but they did not. First thing I want to immediately discuss in detail, something that has changed drastically between the versions, is how the game looks. Space Hulk Deathwing without a doubt is one of the best looking games I've played this year. Initially when the game launched in 2016, it had quite a few issues. Clipping textures, poorly rendered textures, odd looking effects, blurry effects, graphical glitches, but this version is far more refined and honestly looks fantastic. Nearly all of the issues that were in the game originally, visually, have been fixed from what I've seen. The environments are now much more massively immersive and really represent the bleak and grimdark nature of what the Warhammer 40k universe in my opinion should look like. The ambience and lighting in this game is as good as it can be in my opinion. The environments are all highly detailed and visually satisfying, and both the models of the enemies you fight and the characters you play as themselves are extremely appealing. As well, the weapon firing effects and sounds in this game are orgasmic, and the way they handled the lighting of your gun going off in narrow corridors is one of the best things that they improved upon. At no point was I disappointed with the visuals of the Enhanced Edition. They did a great job on fixing all the visual problems from the original launch, at least as far as what I saw. 
From what I've seen as well, almost all the crashes and technical problems have been completely sorted out, and I personally did not crash once in about 60 hours of extended play. Combat feels a lot more smooth, and the movement complements it well now compared to when I previously played it in 2016. Enemies will burst into guts and loose body parts when hit with these massive rounds, catch on fire and run around until they burn to death, or get instantly vaporized by heavy plasma rounds. You have infinite ammo too, which I think is great as you only need to worry about reloading, otherwise you're always capable of passing out massive amounts of death and destruction. I will say though that the ranged weapons in this game make melee feel kind of useless. Although they improved the gunplay and fixed a lot of bugs, they did not improve the melee combat system in the slightest. It's still extremely bare bones, and most of the time I found myself not needing to use melee weapons or even particularly wanting to. The balancing issues in the game are definitely still there and should be addressed in the future, but since it's PvE only, it's not a major concern. The combat overall is by no means perfect, but definitely a step up from the original version. This game can be extremely difficult. You will die a lot if you're playing on the hardest difficulties. Enemies will flank around you, wait until you reload, snipe you from long range, and generally work together to overwhelm you and your four-man fire team. Bosses will appear at points and require an immense amount of coordinated fire to bring down, further adding to how difficult some sections in the game are. This sort of difficulty requires you to make mid-combat decisions like diverting to a different corridor and sealing multiple doors behind you, all in an attempt to stem the constant tide of Tyranid being thrown at you. You will definitely need to play strategically and work with your friends or other squad mates to the best of your abilities on the higher difficulties, and I appreciate that. The real thing that shines in this game though, and the primary reason I gave the Enhanced Edition another chance was the multiplayer. You play as one of six different classes in the game in multi, the Apothecary, which is the Medic, the Assault, which is the Melee, the Heavy Assault, which is the big guns like miniguns and things like that, the Tactical, which is Squad Leader, the Librarian, which is basically a Spellcaster, uh, of sorts, and the Interrogator Chaplain, which is a hybrid of like the Tactical and the Apothecary, each with their own different playstyle and availability of weaponry. You can either play through the entire campaign, dialogue and all with friends, or you can play through a good number of special missions that were added to give you even more content to complete. When Deathwing first launched, one of the biggest problems was that there was no progression system and honestly nothing really to keep you playing. It had this awful tiered system requiring you to kill and do different things during the mission to unlock different weaponry, and it genuinely felt all awful and poorly implemented. This time around though, with the Enhanced Edition, they've added a full progression and customization system, allowing players to unlock perks, upgrades for their weapons, character enhancements, and a lot of customization to just look cooler. It really lets you specialize in a specific class that you want to play as. Deathing will also hand you quite a bit of free equipment too through leveling, providing boxes that have a chance to give you any of the unlockables, including some of the best upgrades in the game. Eventually, you'll look like a complete and total badass and be kitted out well enough to do the hardest difficulty, which in itself feels like a completely different game and experience. Overall, the changes to multiplayer really add a lot of replayability to the game. They drastically improve the fun you can have with friends, and I found myself playing several dozen hours of the Enhanced Edition on release. I can say without a doubt that if you're a fan of the multiplayer games in, like, Left 4 Dead, you'll be able to have hours of fun playing Deathwing with three other friends. So overall, what do I kind of think about the re-release of Space Hulk Deathwing? I think it's finally closer to the game that was promised to us two years ago. I think that the massive fixes to FPS, replayability, and, and general quality of life things give it the value of $30 that they're asking for. To those of you that bought the game in the past and have stopped playing due to the issues of the original, I wholeheartedly endorse you going back and giving the Enhanced Edition a shot, especially if you're still super fans of the 40k universe. Like I said with the original launch of the game, I probably would have rated it around a 4 with the numerous issues it had at the time. The Enhanced Edition, however, has earned a much higher score, and I can now, for the current price of of the game give the game a rating 7 out of 10 in its current state. If you're extremely hardcore, you might give it an 8, but at the end of the day I gotta give it a 7. Overall though, it's a huge and massive improvement to the original game and I suggest you go try it if you have the ability to do so. Thank you guys for watching this rapid fire review and until the next rapid fire, I'll be seeing you. Bye! <laughs>